All right, so we're back, of course, to talk about, well, kind of everything involving FF7. We're talking about FF7, Remake, Rebirth, the compilation itself, all those different things. And we're talking about the character of Red 13, which is a character I don't really talk about enough. I said it before on the channel, but back in the day, he was one of my favorite characters. Like, for the first several playthroughs when I was a kid, my team was always Cloud Barrett and Red 13. And then I discovered Vincent, and Vincent kind of replaced Red 13. I think a big part of what drew me to the character of Red 13 back in the day was getting to use, like, a non- human party member. It varies from Final Fantasy to Final Fantasy, but generally your party is comprised of mostly human or human-like characters. And Red 13 is kind of a standout. Obviously we have Kate Sith, but Kate Sith is being controlled by a human. It's a robot on a stuffed Moogle. So it's not alive, technically. Nine actually has a pretty diverse cast if we're talking about like races or species. There's two humans with, you know, Steiner and Amaranth. There's two summoners with Ico and Garnet. And then everything else is different, right? You know, Zidane is a genome. Vivi is a black mage. Quinn is a Q, whatever the hell that is, and obviously Frey is a Burmesian rat person. So it's actually a pretty diverse cast in that way, but they're still all walk on two legs, bipedal humanoid characters, right? And I can't speak for the entire franchise as a whole, and my knowledge for like older Final Fantasies isn't really there, but Red 13 is definitely like kind of like an outlier, right? In terms of like a four-legged party member, there's just not many of those, if any others, besides FF7. And discussing Final Fantasy VII and Red Thirteen species is actually a big part of what this video is kind of about, but we'll probably talk about other things in regards to Red Thirteen. We'll see kind of where the video goes. When you really think about it, Final Fantasy VII is kind of like the least diverse cast when it comes to, like, the world itself, because it's really just humans and Red Thirteen species. We'll put a little asterisk next to that, because we'll talk about some other shit here in a minute. But that's kind of all there is, right? There's just the humans in the world and what's left of Red Thirteen species. I did mention Asterisk, and there is like a, some outliers we can talk about. For starters, the Cetra is the most obvious. They are more or less human, right? They're just very spiritual in nature, magical, connected to the planet, all those other things. But they look exactly like humans, but I guess technically they could be another species. You obviously have like Genova. Genova is not a resident of the planet, obviously, but she is clearly a completely different species. And kind of getting away from like the obvious ones, we have summons, which we don't really have a lot of lore on them at all. But when it came to OGFF7, there was cut dialogue from the Temple of the Ancients that would insinuate that summons were kind of their own thing before they became summon materia. So I guess maybe technically they could have been another species at one point in this world. And kind of continuing on from the summons, we have the Chocomog materia, which Moogles are a thing in this world, obviously, to some level, some degree. We obviously have the Moogle that Kate Seth rides. We also have the Mog video game that's at the Gold Saucer. But the fact that there's a summon that uses a Moogle... And obviously, like, materia and live stream and all those other things are, like, memories and spirit energy of things that lived within this world. And then with the cut content, there's the possibility that summons themselves were something else a long time ago. Would maybe insinuate that there were Moogles in this world at one point. And actually, if we get into, like, remake and assessing some of the summons, they give them a bit of lore that seems like, again, they were something before they were summoned materias. The most popular one potentially being Shiva's that says it is a manifestation of a queen who once healed the planet's wounds with ice as evidenced by the existence of permafrost in the polar lands. Which would be saying that Shiva healed the planet's wounds after like Genova crashed into the planet, right? And you can take that a couple different ways as an either Shiva was an actual sentient being there helping with that or maybe like the Cetra used her materia or her magic to heal the wounds. You also have Ifrit's assess saying that he gave fire to humans, but also with Bahamut, it was a dragon king that at one point the ancients worshipped, essentially revered. And obviously the people of like Wutai and stuff like worship Leviathan, who's also like a dragon deity. So it does seem like with Final Fantasy VII, and maybe more specifically with the remake project, they're trying to give lore back to the summons, and then at one point, most of them it seems, were some level of like a god, it seems like, in this world, in terms of what they were before they were summoned material. But yeah, getting back on topic here, one thing that's always stood out to me from FF7 versus like a lot of other Final Fantasies is how there's not this like diverse race of species or whatever in this world like there is in other games. It's more based on the humans, and there's a little bit of some other stuff out there. It's more grounded, so to speak, even though it's a very fantastical game still. And one thing that's always bothered me when it comes to Final Fantasy VII and Red Thirteen Species is the fact that I have to say Red Thirteen Species, because for whatever reason, for 26 plus years now, they've never given his species a name. And this has always kind of bothered me, especially whenever I've gotten more into, like, the lore for FF7 and kind of understood the compilation and things like that, because they seem to be, like, a relatively unknown species in the world, like, overall, like, especially with Remake, whenever we first come across Red 13, like, Tifa and the group are surprised whenever Red 13 talks. Like, they don't know what he is, and they're surprised that he's talking. A fascinating question. Uh, did it just talk? 
But we know that like the Shinra company knows about the species because that's why Hojo captures Red Thirteen. And we know about this even more with like before Crisis because the Turks specifically go on a mission to Cosmo Canyon to capture one of these endangered species. So the Turks and Shinra and obviously the people of Cosmo Canyon know that these the species exist, but have never given it a name. That just doesn't make any sense. And that's something I hope they change when it comes to remake. Is for one, us get a name for Red Thirteen species, but just learning more about the species because there's other members. Right? I think it's insinuated with. OGFF7 that he's supposed to be like the last of his species, but we know that's not be true by the end of the game because we get that, you know, flash forward 500 years and he has children. But also with Before Crisis, we know that there is like a female of his species, Dene, I think it's how you say her name. And with cut content for FF7, there was also going to be Indigo and Cobalt, and I think there's a third one called like Gandalf, which I learned about recently. And I do expect to see some of this expanded material for Red 13 within Remake, because obviously we know they're pulling from the compilation. I do think they would kind of allude to Dene's existence or something like that, because we know the Red's not the last of his species. Now, whether or not we're going to get Indigo and Cobalt, I don't entirely know. I know people have been wanting that for the longest time, pretty much ever since we've learned about it being cut from the game. And I do think there'd be, like, a really good story you could tell there, because we know that his species is pretty much endangered. And if, like, some of the only other ones that exist in this world are enemies and we eventually have to put them down, kill them, that'd be a powerful moment for the character of Red 13 where he's got to kill some of the last of his brethren, right? And I do think it'd make a lot of sense for the character of Red 13 because I have kind of a bold theory, so to speak, and not really a theory, that every character is going to get, like, a solo fight when it comes to the remake project, which we already had a lot of that with FF7 Original. For one, Cloud fought Rufus solo, but also with the remake, he fought Rose solo. We know upcoming, Barrett's going to want to fight Dying solo, we also have the moments in OGFF7 where Tifa and Scarlet slap the shit out of each other. That'll probably be turned into a solo fight, I would think. And we also have Yuffie doing like the Wu Tai Pagoda thing, right? Where she fights her dad at the end. So I could see them giving like a solo moment, solo fight to a lot of the main party members, if not all of them. I don't know who they would all fight. Obviously, like Vincent and Sid have beef with Shinra slash the Turks slash Sephiroth, whoever, whatever. So I'm not entirely sure who they would fight. I don't know who Aerith would fight if you wanted to give her a solo fight. I'm not sure who Kate Sith slash Reeve would, would fight. But if they wanted to bring in that cut content for Red 13, Indigo and Cobalt, I could see him wanting to fight them solo since they are of his species. And if he's got to put... If anybody's got to put them down, it should probably be him, right? We also then have Red 13's parents, which we know a little bit about Seto. Obviously, he got petrified, got turned to stone, protecting Cosmo Canyon from the Gi tribe. And then Red 13's mom dies sometime after that, which we don't really know how or why or what her name was. I would hope we get a little more of both of those characters. And then we also have the fact that the species is, in fact, endangered. And I don't think we have a specific on why that is. It could be the Shinra stuff. It could be them warring with the Gi tribe. Like, maybe that killed off a lot of a species. I don't know. But I would like at least a bit of an explanation on that, or at least a confirmation on what it is. And as of right now, that's kind of everything we know about R13's Thirteen's people. For the most part, I probably didn't cover literally everything. What I'm expecting to see more of when it comes to, to remake slash, you know, the remake project, rebirth, whatever... We do know that his people are very connected to the planet. That's part of why him and Dene are meeting up in Before Crisis. They got to perform some sort of ritual like every 50 years to like appease the planet or some shit. And when it comes to remake, after Aerith touched Red 13's forehead, he gained an immense amount of knowledge, right? Because he knew what the whispers were a little bit later. And then once we're in the singularity, he knows that the, what the visions are being shown to us, right? That they're visions of the future if they were to fail. So with the knowledge he's gained in Remake, but also his connection to the planet, I do expect him to play a bigger part in the overall FF7 story when it comes to the Remake project. That's more or less the video, my dudes. The initial plan with the video was to just talk about Red 13 and a species not having a name. It's something I tweeted about a few months back. But I wanted to turn it into something more and kind of just talk about the character of Red 13 since I don't do that super often. So naturally, of course, pass off to you guys. When it comes to the character of Red 13 and Rebirth and Beyond... How much do you think we're going to get for the character? Are we going to get some more backstory for a species? Are we going to get a name for a species? Get more of like Seto and his mom? Are we going to learn why the species went extinct? Are we going to hear about Dene? Are we potentially going to get that cut content from OGFF7 and then bring in Indigo and Cobalt and I guess potentially Gandalf as well? What do you think is going to happen, man? How do you think they're going to handle Red Team when it comes to the remake project? Anyways, that is indeed the video, my dudes. Subscribe to channel if you guys are new. Social networks in the description below. Follow me on Twitter, Dashie, YT. That's it. Bye. Uh, so what the hell is it? Used to care what people thought, but now I care more. I and mean, nobody out here's got it figured out. So therefore, I've lost all hope of a happy ending. Depending on whether or not it's worth it. So insecure, no one's perfect. We spend it with no shame. We blow that like old train. We ain't.